Today we're gonna have a special video, because we won't analyze technology, but instead wanna understand the mind and thinking of Adrian Newey, so that we can understand his decisions better. Adrian Newey is from England and married his first wife Amanda in 1983. They had two daughters together and Newey started to work in IndyCar. For the family that meant that they were living in the States during the season. His wife hated it, went back to the UK, which meant they had a long distance relationship for the majority of the year. And that destroyed his first marriage and they separated in 1983. He married his second wife Mary Gold in 1992 and didn't want to make the same mistake again. In the meantime, he was working in F1 again, in England. In 1995, he was approached by Ferrari for the second time. Ten years earlier, in 1985, they already approached him to make him the technical director of their IndyCar project, but he refused. Now they wanted to win him over for their new era. John Todd had just joined, coming from Peugeot, and were about to sign Michael Schumacher. But first of all, Newey didn't want to work with Schumacher after all the traction control discussions with him earlier, and he was the enemy. And although his wife Marigold was okay with relocating to Italy with their little daughter, Newey did not want to make the same mistake again. After all, it was hard enough for him to see his two daughters of his first marriage in England. If he would relocate to Italy now, he would see them even less. So he turned this offer down and instead took an offer of McLaren. In sporting terms, that was a very successful time for him again, but he didn't enjoy working within the McLaren environment very much. Here a quick episode of his McLaren time. In summer 2000, Newey was approached by Jaguar and Newey wanted to take it. Ron Dennis didn't take this easily and made him a very generous offer. In the end, Newey stayed, which was a good decision because there was a power struggle within Jaguar. But Ron Dennis did not want this to happen again, that one person becomes so important for the company. And so he instructed Martin Whitmarsh to never allow this to happen again. The result of this is the famous McLaren matrix management structure, a complex system of department heads and performance creators where no one really knows who is responsible for what. And I can confirm that from my time at McLaren. McLaren moved to their new factory, the McLaren Technology Center in Woking, an impressive but gray, strictly organized building with no desks out of line, no water, tea or coffee allowed at the desks, you could only have one family picture on your desk and it had to be stored away in the drawer overnight. If you want to enter the building, you have to take a staircase in the parking area down into a tunnel, walk along white walls and through grey doors and then take a staircase up into the middle of the building again. Newey hated the management structure, this environment and that building. Instead, he walked across the green between the race trucks and entered the building from the workshops. He was spotted by the extensive CCTV on site and got an email threatening him with an internal examination if he keeps on entering the building the wrong way. So that is against Newey's character. He couldn't flourish in this environment and left to the newly founded Red Bull team, the old Jaguar team in Milton Keynes. He developed the team together with the young team principal Christian Horner. So Newey sees himself as the creator of Red Bull and their unusual approach to F1. Both turned the team from the joke of the paddock into a championship winning team. They also went new ways with their two team concept and were investing in young talents instead of buying big names. So Newey was very happy in this environment, until 2014. Engine partner Renault fell behind and Newey couldn't do anything about it. And that's one of his biggest fears engine problems. That was already hard during his time at McLaren and in 2014 he was there again. So in 2014 he got approached by Mercedes, to be a bit more precise, by Niki Lauda, again because Lauda tried to drag him to Jaguar 14 years earlier. Anyway, Newey declined the offer because the team was dominating in 2014 anyway, he would have been just a replacement of Ross Brown and would have looked like a trophy hunter. So there was no challenge for him. And he also got approached by Porsche for their LMP1 program. Designing a winning car for Le Mans is still on his bucket list, but he didn't want to move to Germany. And he got approached by Ferrari again. He visited Luca di Montezemolo at his farmhouse, they had serious talks 
and he got an amazing offer. Ferrari wanted to give him the whole Ferrari operation, road and race. He would have lived like a movie star in Italy, and he would have earned more than double of his Red Bull salary. He had many sleepless nights. Important factors for him are family, culture, work atmosphere and chances of success. In the end he turned the offer down because his children were still in school but he separated from his second wife in 2010 already and had a new girlfriend now, Mandy. Again, he didn't want to add additional stress to his current relationship and still wanted to be able to see his kids. And he simply didn't want to leave Red Bull. So to summarize that, Newey is a person who is very competitive and always wants to have the best chances to win overall. But he wants to build the success, not inherit it. He lost his first marriage because of working abroad and didn't want to do the same mistake again. Also, he didn't want to be separated from his kids because of his job, so for the last 30 years he worked in the UK. He was very happy at Red Bull and sees himself as the creator of the team together with Christian Horner. But since Dietrich Mateschitz passed away, Horner tries to take over at Red Bull and that upsets Newey. Because he would no longer be an equal partner, Newey would just be another engineer and should be pushed away from F1. This all upsets him in his current situation and now he got approached by Ferrari, again. And now back to his bucket list. At Ferrari he could be responsible for their F1 and Le Mans project plus their road cars. This all will come with a generous salary and now it's 10 years after the last approach which he turned down due to his kids not being independent yet. Now he would be in a situation where he could move to Italy without compromising the life of his kids and if the current wife Mandy is okay with it, he could have a great time in Italy. So all in all, Red Bull is not the place it used to be. That hurts for Newey as he feels like the creator of the team. He wouldn't be able to do what he loves anymore and his dream is the perfect synchrony of man and machine. So he doesn't want to do management, he wants to stay with the technology. Ferrari on the other hand can offer him everything he wants. And this could become a very interesting chapter of his life. So I hope you could get a small insight into Newey's thinking and let me know how you would like a Newey design Ferrari. If you like this episode, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this. See you at the next one.